In this video, I'm going to tell you how you can control what you eat. If you want to control what you eat, control your body, and control your life, then hit the subscribe button so you never miss a video. We are surrounded by food. We live in a food environment. I drive from home to home seeing patients, and I pass 30 or 40 different grocery stores, probably 100 gas stations, 100 convenience stores, 100 fast food restaurants. The grocery stores are filled with 50,000 different products. And I'm constantly getting offers of food from patients. My point is food is everywhere and it's really hard to avoid. So it's really important that you know how to control what you eat. It doesn't matter which diet you're on, whether you're doing paleo, vegan, keto, vegetarian, fruitarian, whatever. You've got to be able to control what you eat and you've got to be able to say no when you need to say no and yes when you need to say yes. You can have the greatest meal plan in the world, but if you don't know how to control what you eat and you're not controlling these things and this thing, then it doesn't really matter what the meal plan says. What really matters is what you're actually doing. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can control what goes into your mouth and your body. If you can control what you eat, you control your health and your life. My first tip is self-awareness. I am a huge proponent of self-awareness. What that means is you know what you're doing and why you're doing it and you're always conscious of the actions and decisions that you're making you're never on autopilot when i was a binge eater i would just do things without thinking i didn't know why i was doing what i was doing i was i would just do it i would get this craving or this impulse and then i'd just consume as much as i possibly could and the problem was low levels of self-awareness i didn't know why i was doing it I didn't, I wasn't really connected to my hunger. I wasn't connected to my feelings. I would just get that craving and I would do whatever it took to satisfy that craving. And that's why a lot of addicts are addicts because not because they're really getting a lot of pleasure consuming the drug. They're just trying to find a way to get rid of that uncomfortable urge. So whether you're a smoker or you're actually doing illicit, illicit drugs or you're drinking alcohol or you're consuming pornography, it doesn't matter. You get that urge and you just want to get rid of that urge. What's the fastest way to do it? The fastest way to do it is to consume it. Consume whatever it is that you're craving. We like to think that we need more self-control and more willpower. And I know willpower is something that's celebrated in this world. And I'm not saying willpower isn't important. But what precedes willpower is self-awareness. Why is your brain giving you these cravings? Why is your brain giving you these urges? Why are you feeling this way? Why, why is anything happening at all? For a long time, I didn't understand why I was getting these cravings and why I was doing this. I just kind of accepted it as part of reality. I remember the first time I binged, it was on those peanut butter protein bars, of all the things. <laughs> um, and I didn't know what was happening. I felt so helpless and so clueless. I didn't know why I was doing that. Like, what was making me do this? I had never done it before. But then I developed, over many years, a greater sense of self-awareness and why I was doing things at certain times of the day. Ultimately, self-awareness is just asking yourself why. Why are you acting this way? Why are you doing this? Why are you feeling this way? It's not something that you can develop overnight. It's definitely something that takes time and practice, and you have to be committed. You have to know what's going on at that particular moment. Just to give you an example, look at all the food that's around me. I've got, let's see, trail mix here. This is uh, sweet and salty trail mix. This is the ultimate binge food. I've eaten an entire bag of this in one day. This is 3,000 calories, by the way. Then I've got peanut butter. I've eaten my fair share of peanut butter over the years. And if that's not enough, I've got peanut butter M&Ms. These are so good. These are better than the regular, actually. Then I've got some Cliff Bars. This is my favorite flavor, the carrot cake. Um, speaking of carrot cake, I got an offer of carrot cake from a, from a patient. He said, I have some carrot cake. Do you want it? And it was from this place called Gale's. It's so good. I couldn't say no. And that's another thing is that we're always getting bombarded with offers like at parties and then people want to share their food. It's just a part of life. We can't completely avoid it unless we want to be um, monks in a monastery in the middle of the mountains, then we're going to get offers of food. And it's hard to say no sometimes because in a lot of cultures, it's rude to say no. I learned that the hard way on my job um, because I deal with a lot of Hispanics, Filipinos, Asian cultures, and they ask you, hey, do you want to try this? You don't really have a choice. You just, you have to say yes. It's almost a rhetorical question because if you say no to the food that they've 
created and they've spent money on, you're kind of insulting their culture. And then the other day I'm driving and I see this, this little kid on the street and he's raising money for whatever his school and he's selling chocolate bars and here's the chocolate bar he was selling this little thing it was a dollar um not a bad chocolate bar but how do you how do you tell a little kid no i don't want your chocolate bar so there's another example of of how much how much food there is in our modern environment we have you know fundraisers and fast food restaurants and grocery stores everywhere and some of those are open 24 7. And then I've got my favorite. These are cookies. One of these is like a pumpkin flavor. Another one is chocolate chip. And they're uh, really gooey and chewy, which are the type that I like. My next tip for you is keep things out of reach. So when you're doing work or you're doing something that requires focus or something that's really tedious or really boring, uh, you don't want to keep a bowl of candy on the desk. I see this a lot in offices. People keep a bowl of candy. I don't know why. I don't know if people... They expect people to eat candy during a meeting, but it seems customary in this country to have a bowl of candy or, or mint or, or something on your desk. Don't keep convenience food where you can reach for it. If you keep it out of reach and you keep it in specific places, then you teach your mind that you can only eat in one spot. Your work area should be a place where you work and the kitchen should be a place where you eat. In restaurants, it should be a place where you eat. In our modern culture, it's like we've combined everything. We eat at meetings, we eat on the go, we eat in the car, we eat everywhere. I think that's one of the reasons why we're seeing a rise in overweight and obesity is because cultural norms have changed over the years. It used to be you only ate at set times in certain places. Now it's acceptable to eat anytime, anywhere. So if you wanna control what you eat, only eat at those times, like when you're hungry, and at specific places. If you're doing work and you need the focus, that's probably not the best place to eat. Right now on my desk, I have all that food that I showed you at the beginning of the video. You know, I've got the carrot cake cliff bar, I've got the trail mix, I've got the peanut butter M&Ms, I've got, oh, I've got this down here, I've got chips. Chips and guacamole are so good. I've got sugary cereal. Don't keep food around when you really need the focus and you're doing something that's not too exciting. A lot of times we just kind of munch on things um, for boredom or to give us a quick surge of energy. That's probably the worst time to be eating that stuff. That leads me to my next point, know when you're vulnerable. For a long time, my most vulnerable hour was the one hour after I got home from work or after I got home from school. I wanted to decompress. I was home alone. I had some free time. That's when I tended to overeat and binge the most. It's like I had nothing better to do with my life than to flood my body with a bunch of fat and sugar. That seems kind of crazy, but it was just it just became automatic and habit after a while. I think that's when most people go wrong when they have they they don't have that structure. So they go to work and they're very good. Uh, and then the weekend comes and they binge on the weekend. Maybe not binge, but they eat more than they should because they don't have that structure. They don't have those set meal times. They're not in an office. They're not on the go where it's not really convenient to eat anything or they just have too much free time and they have all of these thoughts about or maybe they're eating out of boredom or it's probably a combination of all of that. For me, it was that first hour after work and that's when I blew it. I would do so well during the day and then I would eat like 2,000 calories that first hour I got home. But I recognized that. I recognized that that was my most vulnerable hour. And through practice, I forced myself to not eat that first hour. If I could just wait an hour, everything would be okay. And then I would have a really reasonable dinner later, maybe just a salad, maybe sometimes just some some baby carrots and guacamole, or maybe I would have a dessert, but not nearly as much. I would cut out all of the mindless eating. I, it was just... The habit. I wasn't really hungry, but I just I had this idea that because I was home, I needed to eat something. For other people, it might be parties. Maybe you go to parties and there's this whole table of food that you never get to eat and you want to try everything. Thing is, you're not going to be able to try the vast majority of recipes and dishes in the world. How many recipe books are there? There's like 20,000, okay? Probably more than that. And each one has 200 recipes. Well, what fraction of all those recipes are you ever going to try? Well, it's the same at a party. There might be 50 different dishes, but maybe just get one or two and see how it goes. I'm not saying you shouldn't eat at a party, but just be conscious of the fact that you tend to overeat at parties or you overeat when, you, when you're with friends. That's another problem. When people eat with other people, they tend to eat more because it's, 
one of the best experiences of being a human is sharing a meal with other people. My point is, it doesn't matter what time of the day or what situation you tend to overeat or binge, you need to know what those times are and you need to be proactive and think ahead. My next tip for you is learn to say no. Like I said, we get offers of food like this for the fundraiser and then we have, I don't know where it is, but um, you know, I, I got some dish the other day from a Mexican family. Sometimes it's not rude to reject food. Sometimes it's okay. Like the, when the waiter comes and they come with that cart and they show you all the, the desserts they have, that's when you need to say no. You're not going to hurt the waiter's feelings, even though that might affect the tip that they get. But unless it's culturally inappropriate, say no, especially if you're trying to lose weight and you need to remove desserts and all the treats from your diet just temporarily. You've got to learn to say no to some things. You say no a lot every day. Every time you choose to do something, you're saying no to everything else. You can't hang out with everybody every day. If you choose to watch one TV show, you're saying no to everything else. You've got to say no and really prioritize sometimes. But like I said, you don't want to offend people by saying no. But a lot of times when you say no, you're not offending anybody. They're just offering it. My next tip for you is to ask yourself, am I really hungry? When you're, when you're losing weight or you're, you're trying to reach a certain health and fitness goal, you've got to cut down on what I call hedonic eating. Hedonic eating is just pleasure eating. Like you're eating for entertainment. You're eating for something other than pure hunger. Oh, well, here's the thing. If you're trying to lose weight, then you can't really afford hedonic eating. You really need to eat according to appetite most of the time. Obviously, that's you can't do that all the time. It's, it's hard to do that. But if you just ask yourself, am I hungry or am I low on energy? And if the answer is no, then keep going and wait to eat later. It might seem like you're denying yourself and that doesn't always feel good in the moment, but you're going to thank yourself later. A lot of eating disorders could be solved with this one question. Am I really hungry? If the answer is yes, eat something, nourish yourself, give yourself energy. If the answer is no, then don't eat. What if you did that all the time every day? You wouldn't be watching this channel. Actually, you would be because it's such an awesome channel, but you get my point. My next point is keeping the kitchen empty isn't a good idea. For a long time, my kitchen was totally empty. My cabinets were empty. I didn't keep anything in there because I didn't have any trust. I didn't think that I could keep anything in the house without eating it. I tried and failed so many times and I kept thinking, well, maybe I should just keep everything empty. And that way I have total control over my environment. But here's the problem. How many grocery stores and convenience stores and gas stations are within five miles of your home? It's not that hard. If you're really motivated to overeat or to binge, you're going to go get it. You're going to spend the time and the money to get your hands on all of that delicious food. Keeping your kitchen empty actually sends a signal to your brain that food is scarce. So whenever you find it, you actually want to consume more of it. It actually has the opposite effect. I'm not saying you should pack your pantry with potato chips and trail mix and peanut butter and cookies and all of that, but you should at least be able to keep fruits and vegetables and maybe some Triscuit crackers and maybe some, some raw meat and some whole grains, some, you know, really simple stuff. You should be able to keep that in your home. Once you start with that, then you can bring back your, your favorite snacks and maybe some finger food. One of the worst mistakes I did is I went from completely empty to a kitchen filled with junk food. And I thought, oh, this time it'll be different. Well, that's too fast. That's like going from running a mile one day to running a marathon the next. I didn't realize that I had to progress my tolerance over time. But first I started with the simple stuff, you know, like the, the fruits and vegetables and, and the things that you actually have to prepare and some of the foods that are not as tasty, you know, like having tomatoes and carrots, nobody binges on that stuff. So I started with that and then I progressed to having peanut butter again. Now I have all sorts of stuff around me. I've got chips, I've got cereal, I've got trail mix. Sometimes I do that just to prove to myself that that doesn't control me, that I can control what I eat. But if you're binging today, don't go and buy all of this junk food and convenience food tomorrow and expect a happy ending. It's not gonna be a happy ending. I've tried it, it doesn't, but don't keep the kitchen empty either. My next tip for you is to weigh stuff. I've had this debate with myself for so long, like to weigh or not to weigh. 
I like to track things. I like to measure stuff. I like to keep spreadsheets. That's just who I am. I'm really geeky that way. I like to see change over time. I like to see graphs. One of the things that helped me lose weight was seeing it as a game. When you can turn things into a game, it's a lot more fun. The kind of scale I have is this little digital scale right here that needs to be cleaned a little bit. But it's a digital scale. It has ounces, milliliters, grams, and it's super accurate. So I can see exactly how much I'm eating. I'll give you a little hack here. If you're eating something like this, like trail mix, and you can open the bag and start eating it, wait before you do that. Because we have this tendency to underestimate how much we eat. Well, if you weigh stuff before you eat it, then you weigh it after. You have to keep yourself accountable. You can't just assume, oh, that wasn't that much. I only ate a few bites of that. I like to weigh things, not compulsively. I don't weigh vegetables anymore. Um, I don't weigh all my meals. Once I weigh something one time, I generally don't weigh it again because I have a good idea of how much a serving size is. I don't weigh my oats. I used to weigh my oats every time. Now, now I have a good idea of how much a serving size of oats is. I have a good idea of how much a serving size of peanut butter is. I don't need to measure that stuff, but if I'm eating stuff out of a bag or indiscriminately, then that's when I start to weigh it. It gives me a really good idea of how much I'm eating. And when I know that I'm measuring it, I tend to eat less of it. My last tip for you is a bonus tip, and it's not for everybody, but I like to do it, is deliberately tempt yourself. So look at all this food that's around me. I keep it in my home just to prove to myself that I can do it. There was a long period in my life when I couldn't keep any of this stuff in my home. There was a long period in my, in my life where I didn't keep anything in my home for that matter. I had to buy every meal. Well, that gets really time consuming and really inconvenient when you can't keep anything in your home. And it was also sending this message of scarcity to my brain, which only exacerbated the problem. Sometimes when I'm driving, I will keep something really tempting in the other seat. Sometimes when I'm doing work, I'll keep M&Ms on the desk just to see how long I can go without reaching for the bag. You have to be super conscious of what you're doing. You have to be really aware. Hey, this is not for everybody, so if you're still overeating, you're still binge eating, or you're really vulnerable, or you've just started your recovery process, I don't recommend you do this. I tried this in the early days of my recovery, and I only went back to day one. If you're struggling with overeating or binge eating or some sort of eating disorder, you can go to my website, saneeaters.com. I have a free video just for you that will show you how self-awareness can solve all of your eating problems. If you want to speak with me directly, there is a link in the description box below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to check out some of my other videos.